Hello. Let me see. Oh, yay. Somebody's here. Okay. <laughs> it's working. Yay. So, welcome to the Live Love Now live book signing. I'm Rachel Macy Stafford and I'm Avery Stafford. So, I think what's really amazing and special about this is this event has been planned since October and it was supposed to be in Nashville and Avery and I had been thinking about how we could make it work so that she could come with me and be able to play her instrument but it turned out that she was supposed to have testing at school on this day so she wasn't going to be able to come with me to Nashville. Well, as you all know, everything has changed um, with the situation that we're in with the virus. And so this live signing is now here at my home and Avery is with us. Um, technology is not my favorite. And <laughs> Like 10 minutes before, I was sweating because I couldn't get the camera to go horizontal, but <laughs> but we, we got it figured out, and so I see that people are here. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with us, and thank you for all of the people who submitted questions um, for tonight's signing. Um, just know that if you feel inspired to get a book that is signed they are still available and you can go to the link that i posted um, right before this started and you can grab a copy and avery helped me um, sign the books with um, her own little extras and so you're not just getting a copy signed by me but you're getting a copy also signed by avery so um, so it's really special that she agreed to be a part of this tonight. And so we're going to dig into some questions that you submitted. And then after a few minutes, we'll take a little break from the questions and Avery's going to play some music for us. All right. So Avery, bring it on. <laughs> um, first, Sarah from Alberta. Um, she was wondering what authors and musicians inspire you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so the musicians and authors that inspire me, um, I just owe a, um, a debt of gratitude to Patty Dye. She is a beautiful author that if you don't know about her, you should look her books up. But my favorite book by her is called Life is a Verb. It is one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read. And she was instrumental in me choosing to try to be a writer um, nine years ago. She, her book just really inspired me. So Patty Dye would be my author. And then I love, <laughs> I love Matt Carney's music. Um, if you've read Hands Free Mama, you'll know that I acknowledged his music in the um, acknowledgement sections. And I usually have a musician um, that I kind of just listen to while I'm doing a book. And for Live Love Now, I listen to Noah Kahn on repeat. Um, Noah Kahn is so talented as well. And both of those musicians write music that um, their lyrics are, are stories. And so of course that appeals to me as a writer and I love Maggie Rogers. That is a new one for me um, that I love to listen to. So Avery, next right. question. Um, next is from Megan from Wisconsin. Um, your favorite phrase for the darkest moments and then um, what's a no to self love? Um, thank you, Megan. Um, a, uh, a word for dark moments. Um, I think it's important to remind yourself that you are needed in the world. Um, when you're having a, a dark moment and you don't feel like you can go on, 
Um, and sometimes we don't believe that, but if we can just trust that there is a purpose for us, that the world needs us to be here, that we can bring something that no one else can, I think that's very um, inspiring to, to give you the motivation to hold on. And um, a note to self, um, a love, sorry, what was that? A love note? Yeah, a self love. Self-love. Okay, a self-love um, phrase that I like to use a lot <laughs> is um, taking a breather won't take you out of the race. Um, because I feel like life can feel like a race so much of the time. And we're led to believe that if we stop or if we take a break, we're going to get behind. But oftentimes it's that break, it's that reprieve that helps us, that fuels us to be able to continue on our journey and our, and our path. All right. Okay. Um, from Krista from California. How do we reinvent ourselves as our children grow up and leave home to pursue their dreams? What are the first steps to finding our new purpose? Um, so when kids leave home and we want to know, okay, so what do we do now? Um, how do we find our purpose? Um, so what I like to do when I um, have workshops is I like to to tell people to kind of tap into um, their, their younger self, their dreamer that's inside of them, to think back to, you know, age nine or 10 before the world told you who you were supposed to be and think about what, what made you happy at that point, what brought you peace, um, what made you feel fired up, um, and those are the kind of things that I think that we need to return to when we're wondering, what is my purpose? What is my passion? You know, I've been living my life doing a job or raising my kids and suddenly you're like, well, what, who am I? You know, I think, I think that is a, is a, a, a beautiful way to really get in touch with who your truest self is to remember Remember yourself as a child and remember what brought you joy. Okay, um, next is Alexandra from Wisconsin. I'm lucky enough to have found a community like Rachel's online, but where in our real lives can moms go to for support? Thank you, Alexandra. Um, where can moms go to, um, for support in the real world um, to make those connections? And my family has moved around quite a bit. And so I have had some experience with that. And what I find is when you go toward the things that you're passionate about, um, that's how you can find those kind of true connections. Um, when I think about who I call my soul sisters, because um, as my girls got older and we would move, it was harder to make friends. And so I just started going to the things that made me feel um, fulfilled and what, what do I love? What are my passions? And one of them was going to a speaking event for Glennon uh, Melton, or sorry, Glennon Doyle and <sighs> Glennon Melton. I went to Glennon's <laughs> speaking event and it turned out that I met someone there who became a lifelong friend. So going to the things that you're already excited about and you might have to go by yourself, but if there's a club or a hobby or um, some kind of uh, uh, volunteer work or anything that just makes you feel passionate and excited, go to those things and just see, you know, who you might meet and who you might connect with. Okay, next is Kelly from Texas. What is the single most important action we can take to find connection with our adult children? Um, I think connecting with your adult children is very much like connecting with, um, 
anyone really, um, kids of any age, I think that what people most want in life is someone who will listen to them, um, who cares about what's going on in their life, and so I think the single most important thing you can do to connect with your adult children is be interested in them, be interested in what they do, ask questions, um, just kind of set aside your agenda, your expectations. You know, maybe they, they aren't the, the child that you thought they would be, that, or they're not the adult that you thought they would be. I think the best way you can connect with them is love them for who they are and love them um, as they are. And um, I know in my life, I connect with my parents because they listen. That's, that's, they don't, they don't solve my problems, but they just, they're just the most loving sounding board that I have. Um, so that's, that's what I would say to that question. Okay, next is Leslie from Indiana. How do you stay motivated to continue writing? How do I stay motivated to continue writing? Um, so I love to write. Like that's my most favorite <laughs> activity in the whole wide world. And um, I don't get, ever get tired of writing, but when someone puts me on a deadline, <laughs> That's when it takes the joy out of writing for me. When I'm writing under an expectation, I just, I like to let things flow and I like to process them in my own time. And so that's what makes writing books for me difficult because then it's not really in my hands anymore. It's, it's in someone else's hands and I have to meet deadlines. But, um, what motivates me more than anything is just, um, I always have, there, there, there's something that's kind of gnawing at me, like there's a message that I have to get out. And so I just uh, listen to that and think, okay, there's a reason that this idea won't leave me alone. And maybe I'm supposed to share this. So, um, it motivates me because it, it kind of won't leave me alone. So that's kind of like with Live Love Now. Um, I did not want to write this book because I knew it was going to require so much of me that was going to be difficult to share and also it was going to take a lot of research. Um, and so I tried to avoid it <laughs> for as long as I could, but it just, it woke me up at night. And so it just became, it, it became, it was an idea that became a spark, that became a passion. And then, um, you know, so now it's, it's amazing to be able to know that it was just a, an urging on my heart. And now it's an actual book that people are going to be able to hold in their hands. And that is also very motivating for me on the next time that I have to do something like this is to know that something that I created can help someone else and, and enhance their life. And that's greatly motivating. Okay, next, um, Leilani from Washington. How do I give my 15 year old son consequences that help him be responsible without always making him feel like he's being punished and that he, that he doesn't love him? So, um, how do you give a 15 year old consequences? Um, to be responsible and also, you know, keep that relationship intact so they know that you love them. Um, so what I would ask is how much input does your child, your 15 year old have in what those expectations are? Um, if you're the one who is dictating what, the tasks are, um, you, you can imagine there's going to be some pushback. And I think the best way to get kids to be responsible is to let them participate in, you know, what are the, what are the expectations? Um, 
does mom, does, do mom and dad ask me, you know, what my, what I think my contribution is to this family? Um, and then I, I, I know it's hard for people to think about letting your child not be responsible and then suffering the consequence of that. But that's greatly, that's a greatly helpful lesson um, to have to have now when they're still in your house rather than letting them, you know, protecting them from that failure. And then they don't know how to handle that when they get into the real world. So I would say as much as you can, listen to your child, ask for their input, you know, what, what contributions that do you want to have around the house? Um, what's your idea for make, meeting this deadline and getting their input and then asking them, do you need tools? Because a lot of times when our kids aren't fulfilling the expectation or they're not following through, sometimes they're lacking a tool. And so again, being able to discuss with them and have that co connection that allows for them to feel safe to tell you, this is why I'm struggling. Um, because if you're constantly nagging, that's, that's shutting down that, that um, communication. And when I taught high school um, special ed kids that they had a lot of problems with following through on responsibility, we got really serious about, okay, what is it that you have to do today? Let's break this down, you know, and what is your plan for getting this done. And then if they had the tools and they were aware, then I then that was my time time to step back and let them suffer the consequence of that if they didn't do it. Next. Okay. Um Sarah from Illinois, what advice would you give to ground your thoughts when you are parenting out of absolute fear of what could happen to your child? So when you're parenting out of fear, um, that, as, as you all know, you know, that's, that's not a healthy place to be. It doesn't empower your child. It doesn't give them the, the tools of resilience that they need. So my, my encouragement to someone who's, um, parent, finds himself parenting out of fear is to really try to come up with a mantra that can help you in trusting, trusting that they are being held in loving hands, that they are developing at, at the pace that is right for them, um, that when, it's, when it is time for them to take that next step, that they will and that they will be safe. Um, because parenting out of fear means you're not modeling good coping strategies for when the times get tough. And so you want to be able to sh share with them, you know, I'm feeling anxious about something, you know, this is what I'm doing to create calm. And I love the one minute breather that you can do as a family, you can do on your own, but just even closing your eyes for one minute and focusing on the sound of your breath or focusing on an object that you're holding in your hand, that can instantly reduce your stress. One minute of, of focusing on your breath. And so those are the kind of little tools um, that I share in Live Love Now um, because one of the chapters is on building those resilience muscles because our kids are going to have to face challenges and adversity and we want them to know that they are capable and they can handle it. And, and this is full of tools for articulating that, not just for ourselves, but then passing that on to our children. So I think this is a good time to have Avery play a song. And speaking of resilience, um, Avery, Avery's coping mechanism for challenge and pain and stress is her music. And she has written in the past four months, she's written six songs. 
and she's going to be coming out with an album in just a couple weeks um, with those songs. Um, and so I just, I really encourage kids when I go into the classroom to find that place of peace, that place of refuge where they can just be themselves and they can breathe and they're not being evaluated. Um, and you know, kids, kids really, really need that place. And so I encourage you to let the kids in your life explore and discover what their refuges are. So Avery's going to sing a song that she wrote when she was 12 called Just Be. And um, she, you want to talk about just a little bit of the change that you made? I, it's really, it's not that big a change. <laughs> um, because of the off, it was. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, it's, it's just. Yeah, it's the same song. It's not nothing really. All right. Well, I feel like it's it's a little different than it used to be, and I just hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Lots of hearts on the screen. Um, <clears throat> so it's been really special to hear people us what that song has come to mean to them and um, to share how it helps people with with their anxieties and their worries and even even kids um, that have been touched by that song. So Thank you for um, letting us know. And that's the kind of thing that keeps artists going and keeps making them believe that their work in the world matters. Um, so speaking of, you know, what motivates artists and writers and creators to keep making their art, it's, it's knowing that you touched a life and you all are so good about telling us that our our stories and our songs matter so thank you for that okay next question 
Okay, um, Liza from Minnesota. How do you show up as your best self for your kids when you are also anxious in times of crisis? So, how do you show up as your best best self um, when you're anxious and your kids are anxious? Um, so, I think that's a really good time to check your expectations. Um, what are you asking of yourself? Um, what are you expecting of yourself? What is your bar? How, how high is your bar? Because I do think that in times of crisis, when we're just trying to survive, that's a really good time to lower the bar and say, you know, hey, I'm doing the best I can. I'm showing up. Um, I am providing love and safety. And those are the two things that my family needs from me right now. And kind of just let the rest of, of that go as much as you can. Um, and like I said earlier, finding what brings you peace, finding tools um, to, to relax and a mantra that is healing and calming to you. And you all know that Only Love Today was a life-changing mantra that I used to overcome negative thoughts. And so I just encourage you to find that phrase, that mantra that can help you um, just come back to the present moment. I, I just think any time that you are feeling anxious and scared and worried, you're not in the present moment. So be here now is a very calming um, directive that you can give yourself. Be here now, it brings you back to that present moment. Um, and that's where the connection happens. And when you can have that connection, that human connection with someone, that instantly relieves that fear and that pressure and it just brings you back to, to the moment of now, the refuge of now, and that's where that's where life is lived. That not in fear, not in anxiety, not in the future, but in in this in the present moment. Next, um, Mary from Connecticut, how do you keep going when you feel like nothing matters anymore? Um, how do you keep going when you feel like nothing matters? Um, so Avery and I were going through the questions earlier and do you, do you want to share? Sure. Okay. Um, I was saying that if you like look at like small steps, like even if something is happening in a couple days, like just look for something to live for. Just look, even if it's small, even if it's like in a couple months, just like want to live to see that even if it's little, just yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I was saying. So yeah, Avery was talking about, think about what, what, what are you looking forward to and living for that. And I like what she said about small steps because I think that if you can even just do one thing, that's going to help you kind of create momentum um, and to say, you know, all right, I didn't think that I was going to be able to get out of this bed, but I got out of this bed. And so now what's the next thing? And I'm a big believer in that we are not meant to navigate life alone and we think that we have to be self-sufficient and we shouldn't ask for help and we should just not bother anyone but i'm a big believer in asking for help for reaching to each other and if you feel like you know you can't go on reach out and talk to someone, tell someone that you're feeling that way. Don't suffer alone. Because even when you don't feel like you're worthy and you don't feel loved, that's actually not the truth. If you just ask someone, hey, I'm, I'm struggling, can you talk with me? I am absolutely certain that if someone knew you were struggling, they would want to be there for you. And so many times we think we're bothering people, but people want to help. They love to be asked to help and they feel honored
that you thought of them in your time of need. And so just, just don't, don't be ashamed to ask for help. Everybody struggles. And that's what I don't think we talk about enough is that every single person goes through pain and we're not meant to go through pain alone. All right, um, Amy from New York said, what is the thing you cherish most that you get to do with both your daughters? Well, of course, um, with Avery, I love to listen to her music and I love when she says she's written a new song and I always get to be the first one to hear it. And um, I, that's my favorite thing is Avery just inviting me into her music world. And Natalie and I have an obsession with our cats. We will have these long conversations about Banjo and Paisley <laughs> that nobody else would ever have with me. And so that brings me joy that Natalie and I share that. Um, and we, we both have a fun voice that we use for Banjo that drives everybody else crazy. Um, but the other night, something fun that we did, the three of us, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law sent us um, everything that we needed to have a canvas painting party. And we ended up having so much fun. Um, Natalie was in a really rare form, like <laughs> just, just in a really silly mood. And so Avery and I were laughing most of the time, but I think our art turned out pretty good. So <laughs> if you, if you are looking for something to do, have a canvas painting party. It, it was really fun. Um, next, Victoria from Georgia. How do you keep the faith in the face of an unknown future? Um, how do you keep faith in the face of an unknown future? Well, I like to remind myself that I don't have to have anything figured out. Yeah. What? I was, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, when we're in uncertainty and we're facing something, we have no idea how it's going to turn out. We got to remind ourselves that is not my job. My job is not to know how this is going to turn out, how my contribution is going to be received, what is going to happen. My job is to show up. And I like to say to show up bravely, boldly, flawed, and full of hope because you're not even expected to show up and be perfect at what you're doing. You're just, you are just supposed to show up and just keep showing up, keep taking those small steps. And pretty soon, whatever that uncertainty is, you'll know. And then a lot of times, I don't know about you, but what happens with me is many of the things that I worried about were gonna happen didn't even happen. So that's why it's so good to just keep saying, all I have to do is show up and the rest will unfold. And I think also just trusting yourself that it's going to be okay. I think that's really important just to trust yourself. And, yeah. That's good, Avery. Next, um, Carrie from Wisconsin. Would you ever consider pinning a book to our kids? My kids pause to listen whenever I read pieces of your writing and could possibly be a collaboration with their own kids as seen through their lenses. Yes, I um I definitely think about uh, writing a book. In fact, it let's see, not this past fall, but the one before that. I took um, my Firefly post, the children who shine from within, and I made that into a children's book. But before I had a chance to um, pursue a publisher the idea for Live Love Now started waking me up at night. And as I mentioned, it wouldn't leave me alone till it was written. And so that this took precedence over the children's book. But I, I do, that's one of my goals is to write a children's book. Um, I love Children Who Shine From Within was inspired by a conversation with Avery 
about um, fireflies and noticers and um, I, I would really love to bring that to the world and I, I don't think it's out of the question to maybe write a book to teenagers but um, I like I said I wait till there's an, a spark and an inspiration and then it just kind of takes itself on whatever course it's meant to take so I'm just trusting that I'll know what the next project is going to be but right now I'm just focusing on bringing this book into the world and giving it um, the time and attention that it deserves because it it's been an 18 month um, project for me from writing to editing to now I've been working on promoting it and marketing it and that's a lot of work and so I just I just want to give this book um, some time to just reach reach whoever it's supposed to reach. Um, Rachel from Texas said, what is something new and brave you want to learn? Something new and brave. Do you have anything that you want to learn? Oh, um, no, not really. I mean, I'm not, not as of right now. I haven't, I don't really have anything. Um, so if I, I really, really want to learn how to speak Kira, Kira Um, that is the language um, that they speak in Rwanda and um, I think you might have read about our experience um, going to Rwanda with a wonderful organization called African Road and um, my biggest regret when I was connecting with the wonderful people at the Togetherness Cooperative is that I only knew a few words and so before we go back um, and we were supposed to go in July but that may not happen, but I, I really, really want to learn that language so I can connect with my friends there. Okay, anything else? Um, our next is Becky from Minnesota. What is your favorite coping method during this time? My favorite coping method during this time, well, my favorite coping method now is my favorite coping method all the time and it has been since I've been a girl and that is walking. I love to walk outside and listen to music and pray and just be alone with my thoughts and um, I get some of my best writing inspiration while I walk and I just love being in nature. I love the sunshine. I love the trees. And that's something I do every single day. Um, it's just it's just part of who I am, what I need um, to be able to function in this world. And so, and what's yours? Um, mine is playing the guitar. I'm, I'm singing, but um, I feel like it's not as much as like what we want to do. I feel like it's what makes you the happiest. Like in the happiest place. I feel like that's whenever you really start to like get be alone and like I feel like whenever I'm playing music, I just I feel at a calmer place and with myself. Yeah. That's beautiful. Good point. Thank you, Avery. Um, let's see. Next, um Sienna from North Carolina. What advice would you give to a young and upcoming writer who wishes to write in the nonfiction inspirational genre? Um Sienna asked about advice to give an upcoming writer and that would just be to write as much as you possibly can. Um, it might mean that you have to cut out something in your life to make time for writing. Um, when I first started writing um, nine years ago, I I gave up television so that at night I could write and when you begin to make it a priority and you start doing it more and more you you get better and when it comes time and you have honed in on like what your idea is for your book then that would be time then to create the proposal and um, so depending on what publishing house you want to try to take it to or if you want to do self-publishing you know there's a lot of there's there's a process um, that you have to go through to get published 
but definitely doing it as much as you can. Um, that's what makes you better at it and makes gives you an opportunity to then be considered for a for a book deal. Um, next, um, Maureen from Illinois said, "What do you, or do you have negative voices in your head about your talents? If so, how did you quiet them?" Um, yeah, there's always self-doubt that creeps in um, when you're doing something that is calling you to be brave. It's calling you to put yourself out there. You know, it's, it's natural to have that voice of doubt and fear and worry. Um, but my, the thing that I say to myself is what would be more of a crime putting myself out there and getting, you know, negative feedback or not sharing my gift and keeping it hidden. And then I get to be 80 years old and I say, gosh, I wish I would have tried to use my gift. I wish I would have tried to do that. Um, and so anytime you have that negative voice and it's telling you not to show up, not to make your contribution, you have to ask yourself, you know, is this how I wanna live? Do I really wanna keep my gifts to myself and not share them? Because I believe that every single person has a purpose. They have a gift. They have a message that only they can bring to this world. And so if you don't push those negative thoughts to the side and you let them stop you, then your gift won't reach the person that it's supposed to reach. And you won't have that fulfillment that comes from doing something that you thought I couldn't do. And then you do it. It's such a boost to your confidence. And then it just keeps, keeps you going on to the, to the next step. Um, next, um, uh, let's see, Suzanne from Europe, um, if you could go back in time, um, what would you like to tell your child self? Which things would you tell her to focus on and which to absolutely not worry about? Um, so the thing that I would tell my younger self would definitely be to take the pressure off because so much of our life we think that we have all this pressure coming at us from all these different places. But if we get really serious and honest with ourselves, we're the ones putting the pressure on ourselves. We're the ones making ourselves miserable. <laughs> There's Banjo. He just had to be part of this, this um, event. Hi, Banjo. <laughs> um, so, to tell your younger self, you know, don't put unnecessary pressure on you because that, that, uh, having that level of expectation will only keep you from doing what you are born to do. So I always tell myself perfection is not my friend. Whenever I put that ridiculous standard of perfection. I say, that's not your friend. That is going to sabotage your creativity. It's going to sabotage your ability to show up. So just take the pressure off yourself. All right. So Avery is going to play a song. This is a song that you all will recognize, I think. Um, it's by Adele and it's called Make You Feel My Love. Can you still see? Yes. Oh, sorry. You're good.
shadows and the stars appear And there's no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I would never do you wrong I've known it from the moment that we met No doubt in my mind that you belong Yeah, yeah, yeah I go hungry, I go black and blue I go crawling down the The storms are raging on the road we see And on the highway of regret The winds of change are blowing wild and free You ain't seen nothing like me yet I can make you happy, make your dreams come true There is nothing that I would you feel my love to make you feel my love beautiful thanks Avery yeah. um, and so there was a question that came in right at the last second can you can you give me that piece of paper oh yeah can you answer oh okay gotcha so um Kenyon from Missouri had a question for Avery, and that is, what is the one main thing your mom has done best at loving you? I was <laughs> wanting to know the answer. <laughs> um, I would say um, she's always, like, connected with me. She's always made me feel like she's been more than just, like, a mom to me. She's always been, like, like she's always been there for me whenever I needed it, and She's been a friend to me, which means a lot considering other people's circumstances. So I think I feel like that would be like my favorite. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um so uh I think that's the end of our book signing that I did not sign a single book during because <laughs> I can't talk and sign at the same time. So I'll be signing um afterwards. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so <laughs> if you want to stay on a little longer, um, Avery's going to sing a song that she wrote that is on her new album. It's a very special song called Live My Life, and do you want to talk about what inspired it, or, you know, how did how did you come up with this? Um, just, uh, it was kind of a stressful time for me. Um, I've been going through a lot with school and then I had some other stuff going on but um I kind of wrote it in a time of stress and I wrote it for like not only for other people but just to remind myself that like it's okay to take a breather and just take a little break you know yeah thank you Yes.
to live life is not over yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I love that song. Um, let me catch my breath. Let me catch my breath. I think that's just such a beautiful message that we need now, our kids need now. Um, I heard it a lot when I was in the classrooms talking to kids. They just, they just want to have time to be a kid. They just want to have time to play and have fun and breathe. And so if you can do that now, um, during this unusual time, make pockets to, um, find what gives you peace, what brings you joy, what, what gives you refuge, um, that would be time well spent. So thank you all so much for the way you support my work through the purchase of my books. And this is um, a challenging time to launch a book into the world, but I know that you are with me and um, that my hand is always in your hand and you've got my back and I've got your back. And so that just means a great deal to me. And I thank you for spending this evening with us. Thank you, Avery, yeah. for being with us. And um, Banjo's coming back for, come on, Banjo. Come say goodbye. <laughs> um, so everyone stay safe and just know that our family loves you and we appreciate you. So have a good night. Thank you.